What's going on, guys? Aaron here from the Project's Capital with here. <laughs> How many times? Have I with here. <laughs> with you. Cut. Oh, no. Where's that button? Wait, wait, wait. So before we get this video started, please leave me a like. It really helps my channel. So let's try to get this video to 100 likes. What's going on, guys? It's Investing Hustler, and I'm here with Aaron from Departures Capital. What? How's it going, Aaron? It's going great. It's going great. Sunday, and I'm feeling ready. Ready to go. So yeah, we, we have some big news going on in Ontario. Marijuana is officially legal. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> That's not it. But the big news is that Ontario releases regulations for cannabis retail stores to set open April 1st. So yes, marijuana was legal in Ontario, but the only way you were able to purchase was uh, online. And what was the website, Aaron? OCS.ca. So the Ontario, the Ontario Cannabis Ontario. Store. So th this right here, it was the only way you could purchase marijuana in Ontario. But starting April 1st, you're going to be able to go into cannabis retail stores. Um, this is a fairly short article, so I guess we could just get into details real quick. So yep. in Toronto, the Ontario government has released regulations that will guide the startup of the private cannabis stores on April 1st. The standalone stores can be open any day between 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. And they must be open at least 150 meters away from schools and bar entry to anyone under 19 years old. Amari, what's so funny, man? Because this is ridiculous. Like... Do they do this about the LCBO too? I'm pretty sure it's almost the same as, as liquor stores because uh, the latest the liquor store I, that opens in Toronto is 11 p.m. Okay, I'm just saying like this 150 meters garbage, like what is this? That's like, not, okay, fair enough. I, I agree. But like, did Trudeau, did Trudeau make these rules like one night when he was reading He's one of his smoking a spliff and he made those rules so from schools in a bar entry to anyone under 19 years old the market concentration limit to 75 stores per operator has been set what does that mean a market concentration limit to 75 stores per operator has been set Wait. so does that mean that aurora can only have 75 stores what does that mean do you understand that a market concentration per operator yeah i think that that sounds about right. So I guess each company gets 75 stores. So then Aurora is going to go make a lot of little sub companies and yeah. have 75 more stores. Yeah, just open up another Aurora. So until April, the cannabis, cannabis can only be legally purchased from the online Ontario cannabis store. So that's what you're talking about. I guess you could read the second half since it's a very short article. No worries. Applications for licenses will begin on December 7th. Will begin on December 17th. Is this old news? And illegal cannabis... Retailers who are operating after legalization on October 17th will not be eligible to receive cannabis sales licenses. Licenses won't be issued to any person or organization who has an association with organized crime and applicants must demonstrate their tax compliance status to show they're in good standing with the government. <laughs> the purpose of these regulations is to keep kids safe and to ensure all people operating in this highly regulated retail system behave with integrity honesty and in the public interest attorney general caroline mulroney said in a statement retail managers and employees must complete approved training in the responsible sale of cannabis the government says it will provide 40 million over two years to help municipalities with the implementation costs of recreational cannabis legalization aka there's all these rules so they can tax it yeah, no, the, the purpose of these regulations is to keep kids safe. That's a lie. The purpose is so the government can milk the system for more tax yeah. money, for more yep. tax dollars. They're going to be collecting a lot of money from these stores. They're going to be collecting a lot of money from all these customers who used to buy marijuana for $10 without paying tax. And now in Toronto, we're going to have to buy it with 13% tax. Toronto, Ontario has 13% tax. Yep. I was talking to someone from Alberta. Apparently, they only pay 5% tax out what? there. Yeah, so we, we don't have it good out here. Toronto is expensive to live. Like 13% tax, that's a big chunk. So yeah, they're going to be collecting a lot of tax dollars from us Ontarians. On to the next article, and it is by one of our favorites, The Motley Fool. The Motley Fool, one second. <clears throat> All right. <laughs> and it's three top marijuana stocks to watch in January. And this this is actually a pretty good article. I read it before. I was going to make a video on it alone, but then <clears throat> you hit me up on a collab. So I, I said, why not? Why not just share sweet, it sweet. with you guys? And so, I like what I'm seeing innovative industrial property. Yeah. Watching that stock for a while, 
Okay, so let's get started. With the recent Farm Bill legalizing hemp production in the United States and even more states moving forward, at least partial acceptance of marijuana, the marijuana-related businesses are generating new interests among investors. Still, not all stocks in the industry are worth considering investing in, even if the industry ends up growing like the weed. Marijuana is frequently known as, we asked three of our contributors to pick marijuana businesses that are worth watching in the current environment, and they selected the Origin House, Canopy Growth, and Innovative Industrial Properties. Do you want to just take a look at these companies real quick? Uh, yeah, sure. That'd be pretty cool. Why not? Uh, more so Origin House and, and IIPR. Or RP. Yeah, I don't think we really need to actually look at Canopy. We already yeah, know no. that they went up 34% in the last week. Let's edit this out, but at it's least... okay. <laughs> no, do the other one. <laughs> By the way, that was... I guess that was partially both of our ideas. Yes, it was. It was. It was very much. The first yeah, half so was hustling. Were, so we're going to be looking at industrial... No, innovative industrial properties... IIPR, yes. Oh, IIPR. So let's. IIPR. I believe this is a REIT. It's a real estate investment trust, actually. IIPR. So they're currently. Oh, shoot. I think they're right. I, I did not have them on my watch list prior to this. Yeah. Oh, no, I did because they're not at the bottom. If they were not on my watch list. Okay, they would... okay. Unless I'm, I'm full. So there they are. Ticker symbol IIPR. They're currently at $51.78. And just like pretty much every other company, they have been on fire in the past week. Every yep. It seems like Aurora's had a nice run. Canopy's had a nice run. So they've pretty much been following that trend. We're going to take a look at their market cap, $506 million, which is still pretty good because unlike tiny. Canopy and Aurora... They're in the billions. A P ratio of 93. That's kind of um, shows that this company is overvalued. And they're paying a 2.7% dividend yield. Oh, they have a dividend yield, eh? Yes, sir. I believe they're a real estate investment trust. Management of specialized industrial properties used to state license operators for their regulated medical use cannabis facilities. Yep. So they just manage the properties. So price to revenue ratio of 41.2. Price to sales of 78.8. And let's look at their technical analysis. Uh, right now, they're a neutral a buy and a strong buy. That's not too bad. And uh, the one minute is a buy, strong buy, a strong buy. So yeah, right now, this company is a buy. Well, according to these technical analysis, which are not always correct, um, yeah. they currently have uh, 6.78 million shares outstanding, which is really good. So that means yeah. this company is going to be very volatile. Let's look at them in the past year. And yeah, they've been on a nice uptrend. Wow. Um, yeah, this company would wow. have been really nice to invest a long time ago. <laughs> what so, a steady yeah. climber. Yeah. Because if you think about it, they're one of those climber. sleepers. They're just one yeah. of those sleeper companies behind. So yeah, this is definitely a good company you want to add to your watch list. The only problem is that it is near the top of its 52-week high. Yeah. So I, I would I would I personally wouldn't invest into a company even though it does look very tempting because uh like, what it else? looks like it could keep running but i would say the upside there's a lot of upside already baked in yeah there's i feel like there's more room for downside versus upside yeah yeah i definitely like it though it's a really we're going to talk about it real soon and then the other yeah. one is o r h o f origin house so let's take a look yes, at them real sir. quick so um right now this company has a market cap of 350 million which is better than um than the last company we looked at has 55 million outstanding shares, no PE ratio. So it's not profitable, but it does have a price to revenue ratio of 38.7 price to sales of 149. That's not too great. And the price to book of 8.2. Um, and let's look at the technical analysis real quick. It's a buy, buy, strong buy. So all these, oh, but if you look at the one minute, the five minutes, it's a sell, a sell, a sell. So only the one day and the one hour is a buy. It looks like this company is ready to run up. It's it pretty much followed that same trend that Aurora, Canopy, and Apria followed. And this was uh, right before, was this before legalization or after? Oh, this was actually after legalization. Yep. On November. Yeah. So it actually had a nice run after legalization. So that's surprising. Damn. And then it yeah, recently declined. And now it looks like it's having a nice little run up and um, it, it is selling at $5.76 a share. So um, let's look at its 52 week range. It's, it's not showing. So yeah, I, honestly, I like this company more since it's not 
<laughs> near the top of its uh, all-time well, high. Well, look at its 52-week range. It's 52-week range is about That's 850. Cool. You can just look on the chart. It's about 850, I guess. That's yeah. since it IPO'd. It probably, oh, yeah. No, no, that's not since it IPO'd because it traded since 2017. Yeah. But, yeah, it's 52-week high is definitely 850. So, yeah, right where we're sitting, it could either drop to 4 bucks or it could go back up to, who knows, 7 yeah. 8 bucks. So that's not looking too bad. Yeah, because we had a really nice week last week. And honestly, I'm not going to complain if we see another green week this week. But I won't be surprised to see to see us lose some of those gains we made last week. That's just the marijuana yeah. industry for us. It's a some very kind of pullback, I feel like. Yeah, I, I won't be surprised to see pullback. I'll be happy to see a push forward because I still have a few um, positions that I'm holding. So if it pushes forward, I'm, I'm collecting more cash. I want to be in a strong cash position. Yeah. But yeah, you could continue the article with the King maker in California. Keith Spiel, Spiel, something like that. Origin house investment firm beacon securities thinks that distributors and retailers could be the King makers for the cannabis brands. Assuming that view is correct. And I think it is origin house is an excellent position to be the King maker in the biggest legal marijuana market in the world and in the U S and in the world for that matter, California. Origin House ranks as the top distributor of cannabis products in California. There are several reasons why investors should watch this stock closely in January. Starting with the company rolling out more of its own brands in 2019, Origin House plans to shift its revenue mix from 70% from 70% from distribution and 30% from selling its own brands to a 50-50 mix this year. Another thing to watch with Origin House is growth in the California recreational marijuana market. This market got out of slower than expected start in 2018 due to a primarily cumbersome regulatory process and too high tax rates. However, expect more dispensaries to be licensed in 2019, which will work to Origin House's benefit. Origin House recently announced that it had taken steps to fend off potential hostile takeover bids after being approached by several public cannabis companies contemplating stock-based offers to acquire it. While the company clearly isn't interested in selling out at a price tag that doesn't value its prospects highly enough, investors will definitely want to keep their eyes open for potential deal-making. Honestly, those hostile takeovers, that that hostile takeover for Apria, it really it really helped them out. So I, totally. I think that might be helping out this company too because they Apria shot up after, after that um, green growth gave that uh wanted to do that hostile takeover so oh, seriously a billion dollar opportunity todd campbell one stock worth watching this month is canopy growth because constellation brands just told investors that canopy growth goal is one billion sales run rate within the next 18 months i think i, I touched up on this before but why not constellation brands which owns 38 percent of canopy growth delivered the auspicious news during its earnings conference call this week and there's a reason to think canopy growth can reach its target even though its current sales pace is south of 100 million you see canopy growth's medical marijuana market share in canada is above 30 percent and while it remains to be seen if it can achieve a similar share of the recreational market the recreational market in canada is big enough to suggest it alone could help canopy growth get to the 10 figure mark according to deloitte Canada's recreational market sales could be as high as 4 billion Canadian dollars and its medical marijuana sales could be above 707 million, 770 million in 2019. Couple that opportunity in Canada with growing sales in Germany, which accounted for about 10% of Canopy Growth's 23 million in sales last quarter and an emerging opportunity in the US and you have a recipe that could count that could cause sales to skyrocket. Marijuana remains illegal on the federal level in the US. However, Congress passed a new farm bill in December that removes hemp that removes hemp a type of non-psychoactive cannabis from the controlled substance list which clears the way for increased farming and more products containing hemp derived cannabis oil and the chemical cannabinoid most associated with the medical benefits the prospects have Cowan analysts forecasting that the sales of hemp based products will be at 1.6 billion dollars over the next one or two years cannabis Canopy growth won't secure all of the new revenue, but it's already laying groundwork to capture its fair share of the opportunity, giving investors good reason to pay attention to this cannabis company now. I wouldn't be surprised. I've been eyeing down Canopy since <laughs> the beginning. So ever since that $5 billion Constellation brand investment, that's just the company with the most money right now. And they, they can make the most, most noise if they play their cards right. So It's true. It's true. All right, let's get into innovative industrial properties. 
the increasing legality of marijuana and marijuana related products is setting a foundation for the potential of booming growth ahead. The big challenge with marijuana investing, however, is that the marijuana plant itself has a habit of growing like a weed. It's fairly easy to cultivate, which will make it challenging for even the early movers to remain profitable, assuming fully legality kicks in. That's a huge part of what makes innovative industrial properties a compelling stock to watch this January. A real estate investment trust that centers on the medical use cannabis industry, innovative investment pro innovative industrial properties, focuses on the growing infrastructure underlying marijuana rather than selling the plants that makes it something of a picks and shovels play in the industry. If further legalization takes hold and completion, competition starts to intensify, profit margins will likely become squeezed among with growers and sellers of marijuana as long as there's demand for marijuana. However, for facilities like those owned and leased by innovative industrial properties should still be able to find something, someone willing to lease their space. The advantage innovative industrial properties has is twofold. First, its facilities are all existing greenhouse spaces. Since they are existing spaces, its major capital expenditures are largely sunk costs, meaning new competition will have to invest in the facilities, infrastructure, and know-how just to catch up. As greenhouses, those spaces have the advantage of better climate-controlled growing conditions over anyone trying to compete with fields alone. Second, as a company that has presence in several states across the country, it has a scale advantage over smaller players that it allows it to better experiment and learn what works to further increase the yield and efficiencies at its facilities. Innovative industrial properties is currently profitable, which means it can operate ef efficiently in today's regulatory climate. If further legalization means competition will heat up, its infrastructure focus makes it well positioned for that eventuality too. That combination makes it worth watching for investors. So basically, um, I love industrial, innovative, whatever, in innovative industrial properties. <laughs> <laughs> I love industrial, innovative, whatever, but I <laughs> don't know their name, but I love them. No, I'm just kidding. But I love the thought of a real estate investment trust that's focused on the cannabis sector dividend well it's a little bit weak but it's probably due to the high valuation of the company yeah it, it's nice that you have it's not really a marijuana company but clearly they're involving themselves in the marijuana industry and it's nice to see a company that offers dividends for them yeah, so they? honestly i think that stock has a lot of support for the simple fact that people are only going to be wanting more and more and more greenhouses to grow their weed in right and like it's a growing industry it's a new industry so this company can it's expand, they can, buy, they can buy more greenhouses, they can lease it out to more, like it's, it's, it's an awesome environment to be in and they're not gonna be affected by supply and demand, by a market glut of supply, all that kind of stuff that's gonna affect the producers, right? Yeah, I like the company, I just don't like the 93 P ratio. Oh, don't get me wrong, I don't like the valuation at all. This is not a stock, like I'm not, well, it's it's a little too pricey for me. We'll just put it yeah. that way. Like the dividends is nice, but I, I would wait for a decline. <clears throat> if it does decline, who knows? This company can shoot, can probably end up shooting past 60, 70 if we continue to have a bull market in the marijuana industry. But right now, I just would not jump into it. I like I like the comp I like how it offers a dividend yield because yeah. that's hard to see in the marijuana industry, a company that offers dividends, but just that 93 PE ratio kind of turns me off. Like the way I would buy this company today would be if I made like a couple thousand off of a weed stock and I'd just be like, oh, I'll just dump it in here and start a position yeah. one to 2000. And then if it goes back down to 40 bucks, I'm buying way more, right? But yeah. would I take some cash that I just wanted, started to want to invest? And if it was my money personally, no, I wouldn't. I, I'd buy it at 40 bucks though. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking too. Forty bucks would be a nice, nice place to start your to start a position. Yeah, at forty. The market cap is still enticing. I mean, it's only five hundred million, so yeah, it could go to the billions. This company could easily end up being in the hundreds by the hundred dollar stock. Yeah, who knows? And then they do a stock split. It's Canopy Growth Origin House and Innovative Industrial Properties. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed this one. You want to wrap this one up, um, Aaron? For sure, guys. So if you like this video. <laughs> Give us a thumbs up. If you like Canopy, give us a thumbs up. If you think Canopy's got a lot of money, give us a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. And uh, me and Investing Hustler are out. We've got stuff to do on Sunday night. So 
yeah. um, drop us drop us some comments and we'll talk to you guys soon bye bye